Hello. I want to talk about some of the different tactics that these uh, intervening races might use to gain allegiance. There's a few different angles. I mean, they can be they can be nasty over here, but then they can do other things over here to make you feel superficially good. I've had hybrids try to send me really good vibes at times. Um, so when their presence is close to you, it's not a rule that it has to be very unpleasant. It's, that, that's not like a rule, but there's like a difference between beings that are here physically, very, very close to us, and say, other beings that are not part of the intervention, other races, they're not part of the intervention, but they're out there, like within their own star systems, you know, they're, they're out there. And we may even have very close neighbors that, you know, if you develop enough, you could begin to periodically get a sense of maybe another kind of intelligence. Um, and that kind of that kind of contact, if you want to call it that, that kind of connection is much it's much less intrusive. It's much less dense. Um, if you were to experience that kind of thing, it, it, it would you would be able to tell the difference very much between that and these other beings that are here, even when they try to give you good vibes and they try to portray themselves as friends or maybe a spiritual presence of some kind, it has, even when they make you feel good, it has an intrusive quality. It's very sensational. That's an important aspect of it. It's sensational. It's very much, you can tell it's coming from the outside in and there are sensations associated with it. You're being stimulated, very much stimulated in certain ways. <clears throat> you can tell that when that's present, that's not uh, coming, that, you know, that's not a deeper connection with, with intelligent life in the universe. It's not, it's not something that is uh, natural in the sense of, you know, your spiritual connection to life in the universe. It's not um, consensual. There's no, there's really no respect there, there's no respect to, to you as a as a self-determined sentient being. There's really no respect, even though they may be trying to give you good feelings. Um, beings that do respect you, beings that do have a spiritual connection, that that's a whole other experience. That that's that's a, that's a whole other thing. And. You know, you, if you do come to have those experiences, you will definitely be able to tell the contrast. I had an experience last night. Well, first I have to say that they have been leaving me alone quite a bit over the last couple weeks. There, there was a, a few days there where they would come in and be really nasty and do some stuff, and then they just left me alone again. So I've been having these very long periods of being left alone which is very, very nice. But, you know, like maybe one night out of a week that they would come and, and do something. Um, but they always, go, they always go away again. So in all of this reprieve that I've been experiencing, this, this break from all the, all the intrusive stuff they do, that started happening after I took Ibogaine. So it's, that's important to understand. I'm not saying ibogaine is a silver bullet for that kind of thing. It's a combination of taking ibogaine, taking steps to knowledge, being really aware, you know, of, of what's going on. But uh, last night was interesting because I could tell there was a presence, you know, it was very much there. And it had those qualities of being intrusive, sensational, and they were stimulating me. But they were really trying to not be threatening. 
So, and they were trying to give me friendly vibes. Like, no, we're, we're not here to hurt you. We're not here to hurt you. You have to understand that this is not, they're not literally giving me words like this. It's all about um, what I'm picking up, right? What, what they're trying to uh, get from me in a way. It's like when they connect with somebody in the mental environment like that, which, which your physical existence is very much connected to as well, when they set their sights on that, it's almost like a form of interrogation. They're trying to get information from you, certain kinds of intelligence. Uh, you know, like with intelligence agencies in our world, it's all about gathering intelligence. The more intelligence you have, the new message says that intelligence is actually a commodity in the universe. Beings are always looking for intelligence. And they gather intelligence in the same way we might gather intelligence, you know. <coughs> And when they focus on you in certain ways, like, like what I experienced last night, it's about gathering intelligence. Um, it's almost like an interrogation. So they're trying to get you in a state of trusting the presence. And when you start to open up and trust it, even just a little bit, they can gain access to information in your mind. You may start thinking things in a trustworthy manner you may start opening up parts of your mind that has information that they might want to have or they might want to use, you know, uh, things that they can pick up very easily. But, you know, the beings last night, they, they were doing that. They were uh, trying to give me friendly vibes, even though it was intrusive. So it was odd in a way. It's always strange. The whole thing is always strange. But the fact that, you know, there's this intrusive presence there, I'm being rather stimulated, but it's, it's really trying to give me the vibe of we're not here to hurt you. We're not here to hurt you. Um, almost like uh, we, we want to be your friend. And they're, they're trying to get a real trustworthy thing coming out of me. And I actually had to kind of fight it because... You know, it's part of our human nature, you know, if, if, if there's a, another human being around you that wants to get to know you and is not trying to hurt you, they, you know, you, you might be led into a situation. You might be like giving away information that you shouldn't be giving away. I mean, human scam artists work like this all the time. You know, they're just like... They can give you a sob story. They could give you, you know, they could give you all kinds of bait to get you, to lead you along if you're not wary of, of that kind of thing. Th this can happen in all kinds of ways. And it's the same thing with these beings, you know. They, they, they understand how that kind of thing works. How to gain human trust. Um, but of course I wasn't trusting it, so it's, it's, it was weird. I had to, like, fight it in a way not not fight it in a way of uh, being angry but more just like trying to throw up um, barriers you know because I could tell that the presence wasn't going to go away anytime soon and it just kept and that's how that's another way you can tell that it's a it's a presence that shouldn't be there they're very persistent you know they, they just wouldn't give up it was always it was like a constant pressure and my thoughts might be starting to, you know, it feels the trustworthiness they're trying to offer me. It feels the friendship that they're trying to offer me. And part of my human nature might be like curious, of course. Part of my human nature might be curious as to what that might yield if I yield to it. And I would start to go a little bit in that direction. Then I'm just like, no, 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 throwing up a barrier. But then they would just keep the pressure on, keep the pressure on. We're not here to hurt you. We're not here to hurt you. So I might let my guard down a little bit more. And I could tell that when I would open up a little bit, they're, they're actually getting information from me. They're literally getting information the more I would be accepting. So after, you know, after maybe an hour of this, I'm just like, no. Like, I really shut down. I was like, go away. I started saying that out loud. Go away. 
go away, you know, over and over. And I, I must have been doing that for like 10 minutes or something. And I could tell that it had an effect. Um, their, the pressure they were putting on me got less and less. It was less and less intrusive. I could tell that they were no longer trying to penetrate me as much as they were because they knew that I, I, I made a resolute decision. No, you're not my friend, you know, like, um, this is not a relationship I want to enter into. So just saying that, go away, go away, go away. And when I set my mind like that, I eventually got to be able to sleep. I couldn't sleep before that because the presence was too, it was just too present. You know, they're just, it's very hard to sleep when you're like that. I did drift off at one point and they were intruding my dreams. Um, and they can still get information that way. Just because you fall asleep and you're dreaming, they can still get information. Uh, I mean, it was funny, I, one night, many months ago, <clears throat> I could tell that my dreams were being affected by this presence and they were trying to get information. And it was funny because, the, you know what the dream was? It was all about me entering passcodes and passwords that I actually use. And I, it's, it's a funny thing. It was like a very odd dream. And over and over again, I'm entering passcodes for things. To, get, to open doors or to get into something. Different kinds of passcodes I use. And when I woke up from that, I was like, okay, that's weird. I think these beings were trying to get my passwords for things that I'd use online and maybe other places. Very strange, okay? You gotta understand that, that that's very weird. Um, Cause it was like a cycle. I kept going over it and over it. Like I had to open this door and I'm like, you know, there's things with my work that involve that, you know, opening doors, certain passcodes, you know, it, it, disarming the alarm, like, and I just, but I don't think they got it, like, maybe something in me knew that there was something weird about this, so I didn't actually give them my actual passcodes, but it was funny that I kept being uh, cycled through that scenario, of ha having to enter a passcode, open a door, enter a passcode, open a door and always needing to get through this door. I've never had a dream like that, you know? So it's almost like they, through the mental environment, they, they were setting up this uh, scenario for me to work through. <laughs> and last night, it was sort of like that as well, but it was different. Last night when I, drift, when I drifted into sleep for maybe 10 minutes, that I had a very short dream before waking up again that was like, uh, watching a screen with information on it and I was it was like I was like it was almost like I was learning about this presence you got you got to understand when they focus on you like that and are trying to get information from you you can likewise get information from them it's not just a one-way street you know th th you can be picking up things from them as well so it's like I was getting information, like watching this, there was like an old TV screen and there, were, there was like text slowly scrolling down and I was reading it and there were things about this presence. It was funny, you know, and I'm, I'm like reading it and the more I read it, the more I could actually feel the presence and it was weird because it was like, it was really getting deeply into me and I didn't like it after a certain point. You know, it, maybe it didn't last for 10 minutes, maybe like for five minutes or something, but the dream was, was really kind of intense in a way because the more I read, the more the presence became like uh, very, it just really got into me. And at a, at, you know, at, at, at a certain point, I was just like, no, like I, I, <laughs> I really, really don't like this presence. My human curiosity did want to go keep going with you know kind of, it was sort of abstract you know i'm not saying everything i was getting uh from reading this stuff was 
like 100% accurate or that it was an accurate description of the being, but there could have been some things about it that, that may be accurate as it pertains to this presence. But it didn't change the fact that the presence itself that was being felt became very uncomfortable. You know, and that uncomfortableness started to override my curiosity of, of gaining information and, and this, uh, this repertoire that was, that was unfolding. It was just like, no, like I'm done, <laughs> done. And I woke up and the presence was still there, you know, still giving me the, you know, we're, it's okay. It's okay. Vibe. And that's when I started, you know, after a while, I'm just like, go away, just go away. I, you know, we're not, we're not buddies. We're not friends. This isn't a relationship I want to enter into. <laughs> this isn't anything I want to be a part of. You know, and it did get less and less. So when you become very resolute in your mind like that, it can have an effect because you, you're making a decision. And when you make a decision, your, your mind, your, your energy, it can really get, uh, set in a direction and it, it can really have an effect. Um, and it's really great to have to understand the contrast of experience you know through taking steps to knowledge in taking steps to knowledge very seriously you can start to experience that contrast which is so important what knowledge really feels like opposed to anything and everything else in the mental environment and there's a lot there in the mental environment um, and if you don't know, some people might say, oh, I know, I, I know what spiritual connection feels like. I know what knowledge feels like. I know, you know, but it's important not to assume that, you know, because uh, a lot of people are being taken for rides on all this stuff that the intervention is furnishing for people to experience. They can make you feel really special. They can make you feel really they can make you feel all kinds of things. But at the same time, it's, it's still superficial in a way, no matter what they do, no matter what they, how they try to make you feel, no matter what kinds of information they might give you, there's still like a really superficial quality to it. It's not, it doesn't have a deep, deep resonance, right? It doesn't have that very deep resonance. It doesn't feel like that, that kind of connection that you, you may start to feel if you take steps to knowledge. That, that deeper relationship that you're learning how to cultivate and become sensitive to. The, this, this whole other thing just doesn't feel like that. It doesn't have those qualities. It feels intrusive. It feels like it's, it's just a stimulation, right? They're just stimulating you. You know, when I think about Bashar and Daryl Anka, the guy that's channeling Bashar, Daryl actually does seem like a good guy. You know, and we got to get out of this mindset of like, rawr against Daryl Anka. You know, he does seem like a good guy. So, you know, if you could actually approach him or, you know, have have a kind approach to him and be like somehow, somehow introduce him to the new message without this angry overtone about how you're a, you're a liaison for the intervention and you're a this and you're a that, you know, he's, he, you're really lowering your chances of getting through to him if, if you're coming at him like that. But if you can have some level of respect and understand he's been he's been having this experience of channeling this, this hybrid for for a really long time. If you could introduce him to the new message in a, in a realm of respect, you know, and kindness, and be like you know, and and really kind of explain this thing to him. What would it be like for somebody like him to? take steps to knowledge. You know, I'm not saying he, he should or that we need to like get him to do that, but you can tell, you know, you can pretty much say that he would be able to tell the difference 
if he took it seriously, if he took it very seriously, what knowledge feels like, what that deeper connection feels like, as opposed to everything else in the mental environment. No matter how overwhelming it might be, it's a, it's a very different experience. Very, very different. You know, I've had hybrids try to give me very, very pleasant and feel-good experiences. And I can tell you that if I had not been taking steps to knowledge for the last two years, it would be very tempting to just go along with it. It would be very tempting. Because, you know, they can make it seem like you're being um, invited into some kind of powerful organization, literally. That's how they made me feel at times. They just keep the pressure on like that. And it's like an invitation. There's an openness to it. There's a kind of, so to speak, friendliness about it. And your own human curiosity and your desire to trust can be taken advantage of. I think that's what's going on with the get wisdom stuff, actually. There, it's like a manipulation of your human goodness your desire to, to be of service and your desire to trust, you know, like we just, we need to, uh, like, like it says on that website, we need to pray for the intervention. We need to heal them before we heal ourselves. That's a very clever backwardsness. You know, that's, that's really manipulative. That's, that's like coming at things really backwards. You need to under, you need to, you know, get yourself in order first. And by the time that happens, you would realize how ridiculous, ridiculous it is to just, uh, like pray for these beings. Especially if you, if you don't have this deeper connection. And that, that is somehow the way. That's back to front, man. It really is. That's all backwards. It's, it's, a, it's a manipulative tactic. Again, one of many that the intervention is using. They might talk about, oh yeah, the presence is bad. It's a bad presence. They shouldn't be here. But the way to get rid of it is not to develop yourself, not to focus on yourself, but to focus on us, to focus on them, and to, you know, bring divine guidance and, 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 you know, to warm their hearts and to open their hearts. <laughs> You're not going to open their hearts, man. The Allies of Humanity and the New Message talk about how other races have thrown off this intervention. And the way they do it, the way they did it, is not by warming their hearts. They didn't do it by praying for them. Okay, that is not going to, like, change their mind. That's just, you know, if you do that, that's just a way of keeping the door open for their presence to be here. And they can pretend to be enlightened. Like I said, they can give you superficial, kind of feel-good feelings. They can be like, oh, yes, thank you, oh, we're healed. You know, there's the spiritual connection we have with you now. We'll stop abducting people. But can we still have a working relationship? Can we still have a partnership? Because we still need access to this world. Is that a possibility? See, we're enlightened now. We're enlightened. You helped us through your prayers. So uh, can we have access to the world now? You know? There, there's all kinds of levels of manipulation that can take place with that. That's why it's dangerous, really. Um, you know, these these presences, even though they've been thrown off certain worlds that were emerging, certain worlds that have been able to throw them off, it's not like they had a change of heart. They just went to the next opportunity. They got all these opportunities, like a buffet that they're trying to work on with emerging worlds such as ours. You know, there's probably hybrid programs going on in worlds that are, like, relatively next door or within our own neighborhood of space. There's probably hybrid programs going on there, too. And who knows the timeline that they're on with, with when it will really start kicking up. So we're just another opportunity, among other opportunities that these beings try to take advantage of. You don't, you know, you don't... 
you don't solve this problem by trying to warm their hearts. <laughs> you know, that's taking advantage of human kindness and human goodness. That's not true compassion. That's, that's uh, deception. It's manipulation, taking advantage of your kindness. Sort of like scammers in this world. Human scammers, they do the exact same thing. They know there's a human tendency to want to help, to want to give, to want to be kind, to have compassion, but that can be taken advantage of. You have to be very, very discerning about that kind of thing. Very discerning. And that requires development. And steps to knowledge is the only preparation in the world that cultivates that kind of discernment. That gives you that kind of development. Really. No other, you know, I don't care where else it comes from. Get wisdom or this or that or, you know, anybody claiming things. It's just not the same at all. It's just not the same. So, you know, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the experience I had last night, how kind of strange it was, and how it's important to have discernment with different kinds of presences that may be experienced. It's not, it's not the same as beings that actually have respect for you. Beings within our neighborhood of space that have respect for you, they're not coming here. They're not doing intrusive stuff. They're not trying to um, manipulate your perceptions of things. They're not doing any of that. You know, they, they have respect for you. And that is a whole other experience, you know, that, 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 that's a, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> and you, you, you would, you would be able to tell the difference if you had an experience like that. If you're somebody who's very, very sensitive and is opening up in that way, it's, it's like night and day. It really is. So that's it for now. Um, there's more there's a little more I could talk about but I'll just I'll just leave it there for now so thanks for watching